Yo, what is up, guys? We are back with a new what if, and this what if is what if Midoriya was an actor. Now, basically, when Daiku was growing up, and he's around four years old when he realized, and he actually gets like two quirks, or not two quirks, so like a half and half quirk. And one one of these half quirks are the quirk to be invisible to any technology surveillance surveillance technology. And the other quirk is to slow down time. Uh, yeah, and predict time as well. So it's kind of like observe, like advance our uh, advance our uh, observinaki, and just um, the word oh, pretty much stopping time. <laughs> but it's not as op. You can only do it for maybe ten seconds. Uh, that could still pretty much um, get bullied uh, like in the canon verse, and. Um, yeah, since people thought his quirk was just useless, you know, I had no place, even though almost every other quirk there is pretty useless, but, hey, it is what it is. Um, after this, Deku would grow up, basically, um, uh, like canon, pretty much like in canon, until he's around, uh, eight years old. Now, when, when this happened, basically, Bakugo would, um, would just be Bakugo, and, you know, bully Deku like usual, like per usual. Now after this, um, Deku would get pretty mad. And, uh, you know, he would find the baton and basically just use it. Um, and you know, he would use a slow mo quirk, basically uh, hit the back of Bakugo's knee, and then hit this guy in the back of the head, uh, knocking him out. I know, right? This guy has so much strength, even though he's like eight years old. Uh, somebody who was watching from afar, let's just say it was a vigilante. Uh, not the vigilante, but a vigilante. Someone who's like top five, but not number one. And, you know, he, he decided to train Deku for the next um, five, not even five years, six years. And six, seven years. Um, and he, they basically train in Deku. Uh, in his time, in his childhood, would just spend time, basically looking at computers and basically knowing how, trying to figure out how to use one, and he would just look at the settings like days and not for days and days, straight, and try to find ways to tweak the computer and make it better, uh, with uh, like new software, uh, and he would find uh, find out how to hack things, uh, and you know with the new addition of the CTOS. Or like the the control terminal terminal people use to spy on you. <coughs> after this, uh, Deku would pretty much um uh, after let's time skip to fifty fourteen basically, and um everyone the teacher would basically be talking about their career after high school, and he'd be he'd go to hand out a paper for everyone to write out for their uh, careers, and he would throw he would then randomly just throw the papers in the air and say that i know you guys all want to be heroes after this everyone would start flexing their quirks uh some person some girl using fire some person flexing their eyes like, uh moving out of their eye sockets some person is like uh buffing up his muscles uh anything any weird quirk that they had now, the teacher would tell them that it's illegal to use your quirks but he'll let it slide this time after this bakugo would um uh, sit up and tell them that he's the only one that's gonna go uh, be a hero uh, and you're lucky enough to be some sidekick to some busted D-lister uh, D-rank and he's going to UA International, the school of UA uh, that he whisper to himself <laughs> not for long uh, but you know nobody would hear him since yet again he was whispering to himself after this um uh, Deku, Deku would pretty much just be chilling, and on, on his way on his way back home, like after school, uh, Bakugo would try to mess with him, you know, uh, try to I guess um, assert his authority over Deku. Uh, after this, Deku would pretty much just head out, you know, he's be like notch it, uh, you know, that's not happening. Uh, after this, um, Deku would just uh, pretty much go home. No sludge villain would happen, and uh, All Might would pretty much just destroy it and send it to the police. 
uh, after this, Deku would head home and uh, ask him, ask his mom for the if uh, for the next nine months he can go to San Francisco, San Francisco, and um, his mom would be like, "Oh, why?" <laughs> uh, Deku would say that uh, there's um, like a group he's interested in. Uh, after this, um, Inko would be like, "All right, bet." Uh, Deku would then uh, hop on a plane to San Francisco. San Francisco. There, I keep uh, butchering that. <laughs> uh, after this, Deku would hop out the flight and bit hop off the flight and head towards this um this pawn shop. He would then enter the code in the back room and the door would open. Uh, he would then head downstairs and he would see this, um, these group of people, and these group of people were called Detsek. They're a bunch of hackers who were just like him, who were pretty much like Horkless. Uh, and they had used like hacking equipment to uh, better the society, they say, or you know, expose uh, the tech companies, uh, something along the lines of that. After this, uh, Deku would pretty much join them, or for the next 10 months, he would join them, doing missions for them, and uh, exposing people like um, insurance companies and security companies, uh, even exposing the CFO of TTOS 2.0. Uh, oh, yeah, I, can't, I forgot his name. Uh, but, yeah, you guys can think of a name. Why not? Uh, after this, uh, Deku would pretty much put on the like in the Aiden Pierce strip you know the one in the thumbnail too trippy uh and he would honestly uh use like a um, a gun uh it's kind of like the quirk racing bullets but it doesn't raise them permanently it erases them for like uh, f a minute so this would give them an advantage since most of the people there are in dead sec are quirkless so uh yeah after the 10 months of just training and doing missions for dead sec you then head back to Japan, and uh, when you'd get back there, um, you realize, you know, Japan has definitely developed their own version of the CTOS 2.0 since last time he was there. They were only using the first version. Uh, apparently, some terrorist attack happened, and uh, they had to change up. Uh, after this, uh, Deku would pretty much um, head to his home, and he would say hi to his mom, and he would basically unpack. After this, like, the next day, the entrance exams would happen. And Deku would head over to the uh, UA school, or head over to UA. When Deku would head over there, he wouldn't trip in this timeline, since he's not nervous or anything. And um, he would walk in. Uh, after this, Deku would pretty much just wait for the test, and he'd have to sit next to Bakugo. But since he's almost unrecognizable, since it's kind of been a long time, and... Um, they would pretty much do the practical test with Deku pretty much acing it since I don't see how Deku still doesn't keep his intelligence. Uh, after the um, the testing part of the exams, Ido would still ask his question, but he wouldn't call out Deku in his timeline. But he would still ask a question about the zero pointer. Person Mike would just say that the zero pointer is, is just that, zero points. It's something that you should avoid. Uh, it's an obstacle. After this, Ida would nod and say thank you, and pretty, pretty much sit back down. President Mike would say, you guys can head down downstairs to the practical portion of the exam, and see you would say good luck. Uh, everyone else would head downstairs, and um, they would pretty much be waiting there. And President Mike would say, there's no um, countdown in a real battle. Go. After this, everyone should have just run in, and Deku would use slow-mo before... Uh, you know, um, before running in, so he can at least get a head start. Deku would then uh, uh, bring out his phone and hack the robots to just self-destruct, basically getting them points. So every time you would come out along a robot, you would either uh, straight up just um, uh, basically use his phone to hack it, or just really give it a good hit or two with the uh, with the baton. Uh, after this. Deku would pretty much rack up around 50 points before hearing the zero pointer. Uh, after this, Deku would, would um, 
see the zero pointer and go on his phone trying to charge up enough electricity to use his next attack or not attack but something along the lines of that he would then uh charge up charge up the electricity in his phone or before using a blackout basically shutting down the zero pointer robot then he would still save Uraka, like in canon and uh uh the entry exams would be finished after the entry exams you pro heroes were confused why somebody was using tech that only really the ctos companies use but they wouldn't really say much since it is what it is after this uh deku would pretty much head home and for the next weekend he'd be chilling waiting for his letter and when he'd um, hear a knock at the door his mom would hand him the leather and letter and he'd be in his room. He would open the leather and All Might would be there. He said, hello, young Midoriya. Uh, in the entry exams, you have scored 50 hero points and hero points, uh, villain points, and 60 rescue points. And then he would show the clip of Uraka asking um, to give points, something along the lines of that. And then uh, it would show... The uh, showed that he spurred others to uh, to act, so that's why he got the rescue points. After this, Deku wouldn't be really phased since number one, he knew about rescue points. And number two, I mean, yeah, he just got into UA, but it's nothing too much. Too, it's not, it's not too much of a biggie. Um, after this, um, Izuku would pretty much chill uh, for the day before um, before the next day, where he would get ready in his school uniform. And he would put on his trench coat uh, and head out. Uh, when Deku would head downstairs or uh, head downstairs to basically head out the door, um, he would then say, you know, goodbye. And then he would walk out. He would then head over to UA, basically taking the train. Uh, since in San Francisco, he had to take a car. But now, you know, he can finally take his lovely train. Uh, I mean, it's not like he didn't enjoy driving cars, but, you know, yeah, it's kind of tiring since, number one, he's, like, 15. Uh, so, you know, number he wasn't smart, basically. After this, Deku would then hop off the train and walk over to the front gates of UA before scanning, before scanning his card. He would then uh, walk around before seeing the big three, or he didn't know it was the big three, but uh, he would ask uh, the big three where the where the class 1A is, or door for class 1A is. The big three would pretty much uh, show them where uh, class 1A is uh, before introducing themselves and walking away. Uh, after this, Deku would say, hmm, uh, you know, the, this, this door is pretty big, but he wouldn't really pay attention to it as he would have to walk in. Deku would then sit down and basically wait for the class teacher to come along. With uh, him seeing Ida and uh, Bakugo arguing, and Ida wouldn't stop to say you you're superior to me or something along the lines of that, since uh, Ida didn't call him out in this timeline, so he would be fine. After this, uh, De Deku would pretty much see Ida like a caterpillar, caterpillar, and he would basically tell Aizawa that you know he's not he's not um, tricking anyone. You know we can see you. Um, as I would then get up and said, uh, let's say, uh, good job class. Um, I'm, you know, staying quiet because, bro, they were not talking. They're like, someone in the sleeping bag? What? After this, I would then say, shut up. And then, uh, tell them about the, um, quirk, as <laughs> quirk apprehension test they'll be having. Uraka would say, but don't we have orientation? Uh, we have, you know, something along the lines of, but don't we have orientation? Uh, as I would say, uh, orientation, you know, we're heroes. We need three uh, three years to train you to be pro heroes. We don't have time for uh, civil things as such as uh, orientation. We then tell them to meet him in the training field and tell them to put on the PE uniforms. He would then hand everyone the PE uniforms before he himself would head out uh, to the training field. Deku would then uh, pretty much be uh, changing, and Kirishima would be like, bro, you're kind of ripped. That's kind of manly. You know, something that Kirishima would say. Uh, but 
Deku pretty much ignore him. Since this is, I mean, this isn't like a cold Deku, but hey, uh, no. I don't think if somebody would call me ripped, I don't, I wouldn't have a response. Um, but um, yeah, uh, Deku would then head to the training ground and um, basically wait for the rest of his class. After seeing the class come down, uh, Aizawa would basically ex basically explain to them about the court apprehension test. Basically being that, uh, telling them that there will be certain tests that one of them will excel in, and one of them will be at disadvantage in. So, he would then throw the ball to Deku and say, you got number one in the court test, you know, try your best. Uh, after this, Deku would then uh, basically kind of use his phone as electricity into his arm and basically use slow-mo for more time to gather up electricity before just um, throwing it after this he'd get around 350 feet since i don't really you know he doesn't have like an overpowered quirk like 350 meters i like to say so since he doesn't really have an overpowered quirk you know uh, he's it's mostly based on stealth uh so yeah he won't really do that much here after this uh as I would then say, good enough. You then uh, start the test, and basically they would go through the long jump, the long jump. Yeah, I got that right. The uh, the the sprinting test where um, you could see how fast one person could get to the other side, and that could straight up just use slow mo run to the other side, and he would get um, zero point three seconds. Uh, after this, Deku would. Um, uh, see all the scores put together and Bakugo would be mad and charge at Deku be like Deku why, you know uh, you, you know uh, something along the lines of you have a useless quirk but for some reason uh, Bakugo would feel something wrap around his arm and he tried to break out of it but it felt like it was actually metal and he couldn't even use his quirk uh, you then look and Deku would say <laughs> erase your head um, you know uh, basically recognizing him as a pro hero eraser head. After this, uh, Aizawa would be kind of pissed, bro. He is not, he is not taking anything with Bakugo or anyone else. He'd be like, uh, head to the principal office, and um, you know, something like that. And um, after this, uh, Aizawa would then show them their scores again. <laughs> Jeez, bro is interrupting him, uh, and he would show that. Um, Deku got first place with uh, Todoroki being second and Momo Yayarozu being third. After this, uh, Aizawa would say that they can all go home. And Deku would then head home. And basically, uh, they would then head back to school the next day with All my coming in. He says, I'm coming through the door like a normal person. And he would then tell them about the Heroes vs. Villains training arc. And this is where I'll be leaving off with the start of the Heroes vs. Villains training arc. But none other than that, uh, peace out, guys.